Good evening everyone and welcome to game 8 of the 2013 US vs UK Internet Scrabble Tournament. It's a best of 9 series with the UK currently leading 4-3 and just one game away from victory. Tonight, John O'Loughlin of the US is playing Helen Gibson of the UK, two of the best players in the world, so a real privilege to have a ringside seat. The match is about to start, so let's join the action. And we're off. It's Helen to go first, and she has a fabulous rack, Anthers, Hartons and Thenars. And she'll be looking to place the H on the double letter square at H4 or H12. Hartons, that looks best. And John has got a great rack as well. He's got previews through the R of Hartons, and that places the V on the triple letter square. We're back with Helen, and she has the X, which is a good scoring tile. But I think the bingos are coming to an end right now. But is there a good spot for the X? Well, I can't see a great spot. And Helen will not only be looking to score, but will also be looking to sort out her rack. The, problem, the problems are the duplicate tiles, the I and the T, and the U. It's going to be difficult to resolve all of those. I suppose Auxite. Actually, I'm not sure about Auxite. If it were good, that would, uh, that would work. Add L1. Taxite is being suggested as a possibility that uh, sorts out the duplicates, but it retains the U. Now, tux is a valid three-letter word. So after that great start by Helen, she's straight away got a problem rack, and she's only two points ahead. But these two opening bingos means that we should have a wide open game. XIS is being suggested as a possibility, but I don't really like that. Because it retains the U and the duplicate T, so three of your prob two of your three problems remain. Actually taxis in column. 10 looks nice onto the S of Hartens. It puts the X on the triple letter square at F10. So it scores about 29 points. Rack leave of ITU is pretty awful. But it's certainly not bad enough to justify changing. Helen's taking a while over this move. I think it's racks like this and moves like this where there can be quite a big difference between the optimal move and the one that you choose to make. So it can have a big impact on the rest of the game, which is why Helen's taking her time to try and um, play the right move. Really not obvious what that is. She'll know that whatever she plays, she's unlikely to bingo next go. And John is breathing down her neck with only a two-point deficit. Taxis, yeah, I couldn't see anything better than that. John has drawn the first blank. I don't think he has a bingo, but this should be a fairly easy rack uh, to resolve. He'll be looking to play off some of his high-scoring tiles. A play of comfy somewhere would uh, work nicely. I'm not sure if that's possible. And tonight's match is a sudden death match for the US. If they lose, then the UK win the series. If the US win, it goes to a, a deciding game. That deciding game will be played in any event to determine the margin of victory. Now, what should John do with this rack? Ofei is good. So that could play in row E through the A of taxis. That would leave ACM blank. Of the four high-scoring letters, C, F, M and Y, if John can only play off two, the two that he'd like to keep are C and M because they are the most uh, bingoy of the four. Now, we've temporarily lost John. Hopefully that's a, a minor connection problem. Let's go back to the game. Great, we haven't missed any action. 
I'm wondering if there's a high probability, or sorry, low probability bingo through the H of Hartens, but I suspect not. Now, Foy, that's uh, similar in idea to Ofe, but scoring a lot more points, playing off the two least bingo -y of the high-scoring tiles. Now, Helen's Rack has deteriorated. This is um, pretty much as bad as it could be. Having kept TIU, she's drawn another U, another I, and two more vowels. This could well be time to change. And Etui is played for 25 points. Yeah, I think that is better than changing. I hadn't spotted that. Now, does John have a bingo? He's got the blank. He's got an S. He's got two S's. But the rest of the rack lacks synergy, and he's only got one vowel. But there are floating vowels in previews, the I and the E. So it's possible that there is a bingo. John does have the ISM and the ism and the isms suffixes, but there are no suggestions coming through from the railbird, so I suspect there may not be a bingo with this rack. I do have Zizivar open in front of me. So let's see what there is. Not surprisingly, there are no sevens. And there's one eight scumbags. So John would need a B or a U. Neither exists, so John does not have a bingo. Wow, scumbags, that would have been pretty uh, impressive if it was playable and had been spotted. So John is going to want to resolve this rack to leave a good rack leave. When you've got the blank, when you've got an S, you're looking to bingo as soon as possible. And given how finely uh, balanced this uh, game is, only 20 points between them, a bingo now um, would be um, a good thing to have for John. Fem is good. I'm looking at C13. So gam or gams coming down from A13 would look quite nice. Over 30 points. I think about 34 points. Rack leave of CS blank is pretty good. No vowels, but there are floating vowels. And the blank gives you the flexibility to survive a rack which is light on vowels. I think GAMS is better than CAMS because the C, in my opinion, is a more bingo-y tile than the G, especially when you've got the S on your rack because the G's usefulness in bingos is mainly because of the ING ending. Well, John doesn't have an I or an N, and he has S's, and S's will compete with G's for being the final letter in a bingo, so better to ditch the G, I think, than the C. John is spending a bit of time on this move. But given that the board's wide open and a couple of bingos have been played, there is a likelihood that there will be more bingos. So the more bingos you play, the more rapidly you deplete the tile pool, so the, the less likely you are to get into time trouble. Yeah, GAMS is being suggested by Mr. Brain as an alternative to CAMS. I concur. I'm not seeing too many other suggestions. I guess magic in row K resolves the rack, or magics. 22 points. But I think getting more than 10 more points for playing gams is worthwhile. I don't think the G at A13 is particularly dangerous in terms of Helen scoring well in row A. Uh, now I wonder if John is spending this time looking for a bingo. He'll know that a lot of people are watching live and also on video later, so he'll be trying not to miss a bingo. And Gams looks like it was best. Now, Helen's rack has really turned around. She played Etui, she didn't change, but this time she has drawn well. Eurydinia is good. Does that play? Yes, it does. It plays does it play? Yes, it plays in row K through the eye of previews, and I'm expecting this to go down. It may be an obscure word generally, but it is a, a really high probability uh, Scrabble word, and Helen will certainly know it. 
and Unhaired is also being suggested in column four through the H of Hartens, and that is going to score better than Eurydinia. So a choice of bingos for Helen. Well, which one will she go for? And will she spot either? It's possible that there are other bingos playable. Well, I was just going to check, but Unhaired goes down for 74 points. That gives Helen a 65-point lead. Now, John still has his blank, but does he have a bingo? I think he's been, been a little unfortunate with his pickups. This, well, I don't think there is a bingo with this rack. Let me just check. No sevens. Four eights. A wool sack. Through an A or a K, that doesn't play. Cow flops through an F or a P. No. Rolox and cow clops. Okay. Well, we don't have any of those, so John is not going to be bingoing. But useful to know that both cow flop and cow plop are good. So, back to the action. What should John do with this rack? Now, it shouldn't be too hard to leave a good rack leave, and that is going to be a priority. Cow and cow are both good, and wool. The trouble is that the U of unhaired doesn't take any of John's letters in front or behind it. So it's a struggle to see where John can play. He could play wool at in column 3 at L3 down, but I don't think he'll like the, uh, the score, which isn't high enough, and the fact that he's opening up um, O1 for Helen. But if he doesn't play there, what's better? He'll be glad to see that the E of Hartens remains available. That's always a useful floater, especially when you don't have an E yourself. Now, Brett has um, spotted the cow flops and cow plops duo. But nowhere to play either, unfortunately. Well... Yeah, Wool for 25 points. Now, Helen has a grim rack. She's just bingoed. You're totally in the hands of the gods when you've bingoed because you're drawing seven tiles randomly from the bag. And this is not good. She's got the Z, which is a good scoring tile, but the Z really benefits from vowels, and Helen has only got the I. And she'll also be noticing the L at 03, but I don't think she can really take advantage of that. So what can she do? She can play Grim in columns 3 or 5. Playing off the Z is not a priority, especially when your rack is not bingo-y. The Z is, of the high scoring tiles, is the one which it's the least urgent to get rid of, and you are looking to score well with it but not at the expense of a dismal rack leave. And I, I can't see any great spots for the Z on this board. But if she played, if Helen played Grim or Brim and then drew an A or an O, she would have Zar or Zo at I3 down for over 40 points. And possibly something um, better elsewhere. Now, what would Brim score? Only 20 points. Well, you could say only 20 points, or you could say great, 20 points. I guess it depends on what else is available around the board. Well, Zuclea says, I don't like this rack. Certainly agree with that. Helen's had her fair share of good racks and bad racks in this game. Yeah, Brim is being suggested by our railbirds. 
brig is also being suggested, and that's possibly better than brim. The G does not go that well with the Z. I think the M goes better with the Z. So brig is a lower score than brim, but a better rack leave. Although it has been pointed out that the G could be useful in row A because it could go at A12, there being quite a number of words with two Gs in them, like beggar. Now, we've got the first simulation suggestion, but it's for an earlier rack, which is that mags is better than gams. Okay, using the same letters, but uh, a different word. I didn't consider max. I think one when you've got two letters like FE with a double word square immediately after it, you're probably drawn to the higher scoring tile to place after it. Well, there goes Brim. Helen does keep the G. So does John have a bingo? Again, he has a, a horrid rack. It's very unusual for the blank to hang around on a top player's rack this many turns. But he has not missed a bingo yet. Now, if there is a bingo with this rack, it's going to be pretty low probability. And there aren't that many floaters. Let me have a look on Quackle and see whether John does have a bingo. He doesn't have a seven. Two eights, avocados and callaloos. So we're looking for a floating D, V or L. Well, unfortunately, the V of previews is in the wrong place for avocados. Callaloos would need an L. Unfortunately, the L of wool is not available because it's blocked by the S of previews. What a shame. Wouldn't it have been fabulous if John could have played wool and then played callaloos from 01 to 08? Not to be. Okay. John sorts his rack out, takes out a hot spot and scores more than 20 points. Helen's rack is improving and she's drawn the second blank. She's not close to a bingo because she has the J and the Z, but she does have the second blank and she has a 40 point lead. So even if John bingo's next turn as well, I think he may do given um given how long he's had the blank. But even if he does, if Helen can sort this rack out, rack out, she may be able to bingo straight back herself. Now, she has drawn the O and the A, so the I3 spots are available either for Zar and Zo or Jar and Joe. Probably the Jar and Joe is better, even though it scores less, because the Z is a much nicer tile to keep on your rack. And in particular, it's a much more bingo -y tile than the J. I don't think it's going to be possible to play off both the J and the Z. J-I-Z is a valid Scrabble word, but it doesn't play on this board. And Helen would certainly be looking for a high score to compensate for not playing uh, Jar or Zar. Now, I'm sure Helen will be looking at row A to see if there's anything to the G, but I don't think there is. Ah, what's been pointed out is that Zar could be played at I3 down, Zar, AI and Zar, and then the J can be played at J2 to make J, A, I... And Joe, that's nice. Yeah, that is really good. Setup plays are often difficult to spot because there are so many possibilities with your rack that setup plays are almost an, an extra layer of thought, which under time pressure um, is not always afforded one. But if Helen spots it, that'll be pretty good. And if she doesn't, I think there's... This board is open enough and her rack is flexible enough that she ought to be able to score reasonably well and play off either the J or the Z. And simulation shows that wool was best, so well done, John, for spotting that. Well, Jar and Joe for 36 points. That leaves a pretty good rack leave. And surely John is bingoing now. Wow, a nine-timer. Brokerages, 149 points. That is fantastic. John zooms into a 70-point lead. And it's Helen on turn. She's she's still got chances in this game. She's only a bingo behind, and she's got a blank and the Z for score. 
but John goes from being a bingo behind to a bingo ahead just like that and it's fabulous to see a nine timer in a game at this level brokerages a great spot anagram of gross beak as Mr Brain points out so how is Helen going to uh, respond to that hammer blow zoo graft is being suggested does it go do we have a floating O or T I don't think we do what a shame okay so what else can Helen do she's got Zoa a J2 down but that leaves F and a G on her rack that's not bingoey Zo and Zo 44 pretty good now if John were to bingo again now he would be in a very strong position but I don't think he can with this rack it's interesting that the E of Hartens has stayed available throughout this game such a useful floater it's uh, unusual that it uh, remains available and Ybin is pointing out that Be Grim was best on the brim move that was through the E of Hartens and placed the M on the double letter square at L8. A lower score than Brim, but a better rack leave. Now, John is 30 points ahead. Nice play. 26 points certainly sorts out his rack. Helen's been a little... No, she hasn't. She's got freaking. She's got freaking in row... In column 8, using the blank as an N. It's not doubled or tripled or anything fancy, but it is a bingo and it will give her the lead. Koftgari would also be playable through an O or a T. Neither of those is available. So, is there anything else other than freaking? Helen does have the G and the I in the blank for an N. Which is what she's doing with freaking. So there may be, there may be other similar possibilities, similar ING words. But she hasn't got a huge number of floaters to consider. So. Will Helen spot freaking? Surely she will. Now Brett is, is um, mentioning zoo graft a number of times, but pretty sure it doesn't go. Yeah, I don't think that floating R was what was needed. Anyway, back to Helen's rack. <gasps> no. Helen misses freaking. Is it possible, though? Now, look at this. Gak scores 46 points. I think she saw freaking and retained the blank. Yeah. Well, we'll wait and see why bin to uh, confirm that, to confirm whether that is the best play. Unfortunately for... Helen, John is able to score Levy, and Helen, having retained the blank, draws the Q, which is, um, well, disappointing from Helen's point of view. She does have an I, so it ought to be possible to play it off. But is it? Gosh, how this game has turned around. That The gap play looked really good. High scoring, 46 points, retaining the blank. But uh, the queue is the last thing Helen was looking to see. There are 17 tiles in the bag and 7 on John's rack. Brett says awful timing for the queue, which uh, I think we would all agree with if you're supporting the UK. Now, what can Helen do? None of the U's on the board are available, nor are the I's. And it's, I can't see what she can do. Now, Chin is being suggested, but where? There must be a floating N that's available. Not that I can see. Yep, G, G2, Chin, 13 points, and retaining the F. And the LR combination is not great either, but that um, combination is ameliorated by the F because FL and FR do have synergy. I'm wondering if exchanging Q and F or QF and L might be better than Chin. Chin only scores 13 points. But there are two U's in the bag. If you chuck the Q back, there's a possibility that John will draw the Q and a U. 
Now, Helen has got just under five and a half minutes left. So she's not in time trouble, but she will be soon, which is a sort of time trouble. And she spent a while over this move. But what is there to consider apart from chin or change? Fur for 33. Helen's retained the Q. But she scored 33 points. Now, looking at John's rack, this looks close to a bingo. This looks really close. But what does he have? Injurate goes down for 68 points. Another hammer blow. And Helen's sitting there with the Q. And the E of Hartens has now been taken out of action as a floater for a bingo. Eight tiles left, and Helen is 98 points behind. This is not looking good for Helen. The U of Injurate is not available as a floater for a bingo. And the remaining tiles are pretty pretty good from John's point of view. They're either bingo -y or a good mixture of vowels and constants, so he ought to be able to keep the score rolling along. So even if Helen bingos now, um, John is the favourite to win. Now, what should Helen do? She's got four minutes left on the clock. I wonder if she's thinking of retaining the queue on the grounds that uh, a bingo with a queue in it is the only way to get a high enough scoring bingo to win. But the trouble, trouble with that strategy is that it requires her to, if she's retaining the queue, to score well with her other tiles. And they're all one-pointers, so it's no good retaining the queue and only scoring 10 or 15 points. For that strategy to work, she'd really need to score about 30 points. And that's not going to happen. Well, I'm wondering about playing uh, Quinn through the U of Injurate. Don't really like that. Only 14 points. And even if Chin at G2 is played for 13 points, the rack leave of E, L, N, R is not good. L, N and R do not really have synergy together. Certainly not as a threesome. Now Helen's got three minutes on her clock. There are eight tiles in the bag. What can she do? Not getting many suggestions from the railbirds. It's a lonely business, Scrubble. Plenty of suggestions when you've got a great rack. So, what's being suggested here? Kintar, using the blank. Oh, I see. At H12 down, use the blank as an A, play Kintar, and hope that you draw tiles to play a bingo. There being a bingo lane in column 15 from the S of brokerages and also through the E of Injurate, so difficult to block all bingo lanes. And Kintar itself would provide the floating R in row M. So I think actually Kintar might be the only way Helen can win. 48 points, which would give her 430 odd points. She'd be 50 points behind. Say John's on turn, say he gets 30, he'd be 80 points ahead. If Helen then bingos, they're, they're neck and neck. Advantage would probably still be with John just, but I think Kintar is the only play which gives Helen a hope of winning. Will she play it? Maybe she'll find something better. Wow, the simulation shows that Earth and Fur were better than Chin. Oh, well, that's a similar idea, Quern for 46. Four tiles in the bag. John is 52 points ahead. He'll be looking to play off three tiles to leave one in the bag so that if Helen bingos, he gets another turn. 
He doesn't have a great rack, but I don't think he'll be bothered by that because he's got two vowels, which is enough to get value out of the high-scoring tiles, the P and the H. Now, I don't know how Quern Sims compared to Kintar. I guess the argument against Kintar is that it places the Q um, three letters short of the triple word square at H15, and with a U unseen, John could easily play a QU word across to that triple word square. Kern is a little, a little better in that respect, but in playing Quern, Helen has uh, taken out the the hooks for injurate, which I believe are D and S. But I suspect there's not a huge difference between Kintar and Quern. They're both moves which um, allow a hope of winning. So well done for Helen for burning her blank. That was certainly the the right thing to do. Or well, it appears to be. So, what can John do? Not seen many suggestions. I guess hip is playable at H14 down. About 34 points. But then that leaves the possibility of a big, big play from Helen in column 15. But I still like hip. I still like it. So I think John needs to play off three tiles and score well. Maybe there's something better than hip in the same spot. John will know that the there are no blanks and no S's, so Quern can't be hooked to make Querns. Now John has got uh, six and a half minutes. He plays Pith for 28 points, which is the right thing. Score well, play off three tiles, leave one in the bag. Helen does not have a great rack. I don't think she has a bingo with this rack. Too many vowels. And that's a shame because look at the remaining tiles, there are only two vowels unseen, so she's a little unfortunate to have drawn quite as many as she has done. Close to you, Logie and you, Glenid, as pointed out by Zoo Claire. But I don't think she has a bingo. And she's 80 points behind. Even if she did bingo now, I think John, because he would have an extra move, would... Um, pretty much be guaranteed the win but a valiant effort from Helen oops so annoying when that happens Doji gets played and Helen has got ELNU on her rack and John has got the rack that we can see at the top of the screen plus more importantly he has got a 56 point lead dead is being suggested and injurated in column 14 this has been a really high scoring game it's being pointed out that their combined scores are nearly over a thousand points and that's pretty rare that's they're both averaging over 500 or nearly. And Delt and Dead are both being suggested. I suspect Helen might have outs with her loon. Maybe not. Certainly if if Delt was played she would have lunette in row O and unlet. I'm looking around to see where Helen can go out and it's not easy to see. She has only got 17 seconds on her clock so she won't have much thinking time once John has played. So if John uses up his five minutes, I think Helen will be grateful for that additional thinking time. So 
So what can John do with his rack? If he plays dead, is Loon playable? I don't think it is. But it's possible that Helen has got an out elsewhere. At the moment, I, on the board as it stands, I cannot see an out for Helen. Dead threatens outplay with stilt, does it? Yep, it does. In row N. Dead. Okay, hadn't considered that. Leaving LTT. And Helen's got... Well, unled? Is that good? Yes, it is. Okay. Cool. Well, I suspect dead may have been um, an error, dare I say it. So, we have the final score. 468 to Helen, 535 to John, a winning margin of 67 points. Sudden death has been avoided. The US and the UK are now level at four games apiece, and the final ninth game will be crucial. That's going to be played in two days' time on Thursday night, and it's between Helen and Chris Leip, and that single game will determine the winner of this nine-game series. This has been a fabulous game. Let's see what the players missed. And I don't think it was much. I think this was a pretty high quality game. So, Helen to go first with Hartens. Splendid start. John replied with previews. The only bingo. Helen had a bad rack, but taxis looks like it was best. John's play of Foy looks best. Helen's play of Etui looks best. Now here, cams and gams, well, yeah, we discussed that. I think there's very little difference between those and uh, and mags. Unhaired, the best bingo, although there were others. Wool looks like it was best. And I think that was confirmed during the game by the simulation. Well, zig, okay. Now this is where Brim was played. Looking at the rack leave, I think Brim um, is not obviously uh, inferior to Zig and uh, Big Grim simmed best, so Brim was close. Still no bingo for John, but Callow looks like it was best. Zoaria for 80 points? Good grief. That's a huge amount. That's coming down from J2 down to onto the A of Callow. Wow, 80 points. That is immense. Now what did what did Helen do? Um, Joe and Jar for 30 odd points retaining the blank so although I think Zoaria was best it wasn't it wasn't sort of 40 points better because the blank was burned now John did have a bingo here brokerage is a nine timer fabulous spot could also have been spelt with a C so a choice of nine timers for John and Helen yeah Zo and Zar looks like it was uh, close to being best. This is where John played Niobic, which was a nice spot, 26 points, that looks fine. This is where Helen passed up on Free King and scored only 19 fewer points for Gak, and I think Gak is the superior play, so I do not regard that as a missed bingo. John, um, he played Levy, he could also have played Envy, I think uh, Levy has the better rack leave. Helen's um, play of Gat keeping the blank was not rewarded with a bingo. In fact, she drew the cue, but uh, Earth and Fur, yeah, Earth would have been better. Earth at D4. Oh, I see, Earth and Kiff, yeah, that would have been better than FER, five points better. But those two moves, I think, were the best. Injurate, that looks best. There were a number of other possibilities. In queer for 52. Well, the theme here is the same. Burn the cu burn the blank. Score well with the Q. And that's what Helen did. Um, well, I don't know what the best play was here. I suspect there's little to choose between these and Pith may well have been best. 
Doji, that was Helen's play, I think. Yep. This is where John played dead. I think it was not not best, but always tricky with these end games. Maybe John's seen something that uh, I overlooked. Now uh, here, um, Unled was the only uh, outplay. So well done, Helen, for spotting that. Totally fabulous game. Really high scoring, and uh, really sets the the series up nicely for the, uh, the the showdown decider on Thursday. So I hope you've enjoyed watching tonight. Join us again live for the final at the Internet Scrabble Club on Thursday. And that will be recorded and put out on YouTube uh, the following day for those who cannot see it live. But thank you for watching tonight. I hope you enjoyed it.